thank you so much for having me. I'm glad today again to speak about Monitored Markov Decision Process, or we call it MonMDB. This is a joint work with Simoni, Alreza, Matt Taylor, and Mike Bolling. Uh, we're going to present this work at AMLs this year. Uh, so before going to the presentation, I would like to make two quick notes. So the first one, um, if you have any question during the presentation, especially clarification question, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer it during the presentation. The next thing is that this is the, the work I'm going to present today is, is just the tip of the eyes of, of this project. So it's still an ongoing project. We're going to different direction. So we will appreciate your discussion, questions, feedbacks, critique. That will help us kind of move, for, uh, move forward. OK? So let's start. Uh, I always love to start with motivation example because that's, let's say, connect our research with uh, about real world. So assume that you have kind of a cleaning robot in your home. That's to say clean uh, your home and make it clean and maintain all the time. And it work and it learned to do things by RL. So that's mean like it observe observation and states from, from the environment and it take an action to the environment and also it receive reward telling them how good or bad. But the twist is here that actually this reward is coming from either a human being. So for example, uh, the human can give a feedback if the robot cleaned the area, that's a good thing. If the robot is a, uh, went to the wall or hit kind of a door, that's something bad. Uh, so this feedback would be coming from the human. Or it could be coming for something else. For example, we call it monitoring system. So assume that you have cameras. So those cameras have kind of detection. It can detect, let's say, the spot of the dirt in your home and will tell the agent actually how good or bad they clean it or not clean it, or they can kind of provide the feedback to the, uh, to the, to the robot. But the challenge here is actually, is basically that saying, does a human available all the time to provide the feedback? It will be waste of our time if like at every second you are in home providing a feedback to your cleaning robot. That's, that would be just kind of too much. Or it will be also very expensive if you want to have to install cameras in every inch of your home. That would be also kind of very, very expensive. So what I'm driving to here is that basically that there are situation or real world application where the reward is sometimes unobservable to the agent. And that's what we would like to solve in this, um, in this work. So one thing about that is actually, I mentioned that the reward may, may or may not be observable to the agent. But here, there's assumption that the, the reward is always generated by the environment. So the environment generates the rewards, but the agent may or may not see it. And here is, there is a question that, is that being part of the problem or that part of the solution? By a problem, I mean kind of the part of the problem formalization. And the solution, I mean that's, that's the agent problem. The agent should figure out that one. And I hope by the end of this presentation, we will provide enough evidence to agree with us that it's basically part of the problem. So just to recap what I just mentioned, that there are, various, there are real world applications or situations where it's kind of the reward is unobservable to the agent, but the agent still should, be, uh, should maximize this unobservable reward uh, for that one. Uh, and, 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 and the current formalization of the MDBs does not allow us to do that because MDBs always um, assume that the reward is always available to the agent or always observable to the agent. But there are some real world application where the reward is sometimes unobservable to the agent. OK? So moving to the formalization, I will try to minimize the number of math in this presentation to the minimum. Uh, so this is kind of a normal diagram where you have RL. Uh, we have an agent interacting with the environment. So the agent actually receives states from the environment, what we call it SE, and it takes an action into the environment. We call it AE, the, the, the environment action. It also receives the, um, the environment reward, RE. How MDB is actually different from one MDB, uh, how MD, normal MDB is different from one MDB is basically we introduce something called monitor, which is basically an intermediate layer between the environment and between the agent. So it takes the, the, the reward environment. I'm not sure if you can see my pointer. Okay. 
So it takes the, the environment reward, as, as I just mentioned before, the environment reward is always generated, but it actually, it return something we call it kind of proxy reward, which is sometimes could be undefined or unobservable to the agent. So in order to do that, I have, we have to introduce new things for the, to, the, to the formalization. We introduce, for example, SM, which is a monitoring state. And that could be something like, this room have a monitoring system, but that one doesn't have a monitoring system. So that explains, are you being monitored right now or not? We also introduce what we call it the uh, monitoring action, AM. And that could be something simple like, the agent could have the uh, could have it as a part of, in, in, of, of its action space. So for example, I could ask to be monitored, like, can you please give me a feedback from what I did, or I don't want, it, um, I don't want your, your, your feedback. Uh, as I just mentioned before, the monitoring is works kind of intermediate layer between the environment and the reward. Uh, so that's what we call it here, kind of the proxy reward, RE hat. RE hat could be undefined or unobservable, but it could be also the reward uh, the, the environment reward. So combining RE, there is also sorry, a, a term I forgot to mention is RM, which is the monitoring reward. So think about it that to the, to the cleaning robot example. So if the cleaning robot uh, get a feedback from a human, it may cause a human some time to, to provide feedback. So it makes sense that the agent may be, may, may should pay a cost for that one because you cost a human being sometimes and that could be, let's say, a penalty that the agent should pay uh, if they ask to be monitored. So combining RM and RE hat, which is we call it the proxy reward, uh, this is what we call it kind of the receive reward. This is what the agent actually receive. But keep in our mind that one could be, un uh, could be undefined or unobservable. Go ahead. So in your previous slide, you mentioned that like the human could give a reward, but then a monitor could give a reward. So in this case, like, is the human the monitor, or the human is like the environment reward? I guess are these dif different, or are these the same? This is a really good question. So in the previous example, you just mentioned is that there are different monitoring scenarios. Like for example, you can have either human or monitoring system. But by the end of the day, I mean they are kind of work at the monitoring system. So they could decide, like, I would like to give you a feedback. For example, like, this room have a, have a monitoring system. So that's mean, like, you're being monitored. But that one doesn't have. So now this is a, the, the example of monitoring system. It could be that the human left the home. So now it, they, there's no one can monitor you. Or maybe that the agents sometimes have the, have the ability to ask to be monitored or not. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Um, so the proxy reward can be unseen, but the monitor reward is always seen? It's always seen. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. So if I remove the monitor and then assume that the rewards are stochastic, right? So sometimes I see the rewards, sometimes I don't, right? Okay. Would that still be something similar? I'm, I'm assuming you, you have this decoupling because you're gaining something else to yeah. I will talk about it later on. Okay. Yeah. There's, there are some slides about that decoupling it. Okay. Uh, just to continue for that, so from the agent perspective, what the agent sees is actually saying what we call it kind of the join state, which is combining the environment state and monitoring state. And also it takes kind of a joint action, which is the environment action and the monitoring action. But the agent should maximize what we call it kind of the joint reward, which is RE, which is the environment reward, and RM. So combining them together, that's what give us get, or some uh, uh, sum them together will give us kind of a real number, and that's what the agent should maximize. Even if sometimes this one could be unseen. Okay, so this is what the agent receives, and this is what the agent should maximize. Okay, maybe that's a little bit confusing. So I will try to connect the formalization with the motivation example I gave it before, and I would like your help for that one. So back to the example of um, kind of the cleaning robot. What do you think kind of the state may look like in this scenario? Like the robot's odometry, like it's belief over its, like it has an eye of you. Yes, it's it may be a camera or something like that. Okay, it's good. What does the action may look like the environment action can take? Speed velocities. Exactly, maybe kind of turning the vacuum on or off, moving in directions. 
what about suitable reward function? We would like to clean the dirt and avoid hitting it to obstacles. Yes, maybe. Maybe it's also to be a condition on if there's dirt in this area or not. Um, maybe if you have a child that, like, you know, missing around, uh, even if you visit that one, maybe the child came and make some dirt, so you'd like to clean it again. So yeah, um, those are just kind of examples uh, about what is kind of the states, the environment, uh, the state of the environment, the actions, and the reward. Can someone help me also, if you would like to move that to monitored MDB, what is the monitoring state may look like? I gave some hint before. The cameras? Yeah, it could be the cameras. You have maybe kind of a light that tell you are, are being monitored right now or not. Um, about the monitoring action, that could be simple as kind of, I could raise my hand like I need to help or I could go to that point and when I got that position, that means I need a help for that one or I need a feedback for this one. Uh, I'm monitoring a simple bit, but it also be I'm monitoring this region, but not that region. Is it more than a bit? Is it the whole, the whole room that monitored at different locations? It could be that one as well. This example here, just a bit. Cameras on at all. The cameras on, you see everything. So yeah, in this example, I'm trying to make it, let's say, like rooms. So this room, you kind of, if you have camera, that means like you cover the whole room. Oh. But yeah, of course, you can you can divide that even to areas and to uh, for that one. Yeah, this is a really good question. Um, going to the, re the monitoring reward, monitoring reward could be something like, if I ask to be monitored, or if I'm being monitored, maybe I have to pay a penalty for that one, a small penalty. Um, otherwise, I, I shouldn't pay a penalty for that one. And the proxy reward, as, as, we just, um, as, as I mentioned before, it could be, if you ask to be monitored, that means you will receive the environment reward. Uh, it could be the environment reward, or it could be something undefined, NAN, or any in is any another symbol that saying that you cannot observe this reward. Any questions so far? So what does the agent see? It sees everything. It sees the hats, right? It sees. Yeah. So the agent see the combine the the tuple the re hat, which is a proxy reward, which could be undefined, and sees also the monitoring uh, reward. It also sees the state, the correct state. Or it's in the states. The the combination of the uh, the environment state and the monitoring state. And it takes action into both of them as well. <coughs> Any other questions? <clears throat> okay. Uh, now I'd like to connect MDBs with MonMDB. So if we think about the reward observability as kind of access, so in this, in this kind of far left here, you have an extreme where it's kind of the reward is never being observed. That's, that's something we call it unsolvable MDPs because there is no signal telling the agent what is a task is. So you can't solve that one because there is no signal. You can observe the reward, you can't tell. If you move to the other extreme where it's kind of the reward is always available, that's normal MDPs. But what I'm trying to see here is actually there is an interesting area here. Where it's kind of the reward sometimes could be observable, other times maybe not be observable, and that's what we're trying to do. So to give a different perspective of that one, thinking about it as kind of MDP as the big umbrella. Inside it, there are a small part which we call the kind of solvable MDP. By a solvable, I mean there is an existing optimal policy for that one. So for example, the unsolvable MDP is you can't you cannot distinguish between policies because there is no signal telling uh, telling the agent what is the task is. So there is a part of MoneyMDB as being solvable. Inside of the solvable uh, MoneyMDB is a special case where the rewards always available, and that's kind of the MDBs. But there's also other part, which is I just mentioned before, like you know the reward is, is never observable to the agent. That's something you cannot solve. It. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. So in this slide, I'm trying to, to trying to give some arguments about why RL needs MoneyMDB. So some people may think that okay, MoneyMDB could be something like you just delay the reward. 
Like for example, you have the cleaning robot, uh, the homeowner went out and came back and now I will give a reward about what happened before. But that doesn't seem right because now you, you break the Markovian assumption. Uh, now like, you know, like the sequence of action, like I will take an action now, but I will get a reward later on. So that's not kind of a delayed reward. And that also have this other, as a disadvantage of about kind of making the, uh, like putting a burden in the state representation. So I have to uh, take care about kind of a long sequence of action and that has a problem of the credit assignment. So another thing would be, would be like, what happened if we decoupled kind of the monitored as a part and the environment as other parts. So you have policy for the monitored and policy for the environment. But that's has kind of the disadvantage of the agent will not be able to learn the joint actions. So like, like I can, let's say, clean this area and being monitored, or I can clean this area and not being monitored, and I can distinguish between both of them because I have different policy for that one. So an example for that could be like, the, the agent may learn that, okay, I will clean the home if the, um, if, the, if the homeowner is there, but if they left, I could do whatever I want. Like, I could run to the wall, I could track obstacles because I wasn't being monitored. And, uh, and that's actually a disadvantage of, of kind of decoupling possibly. So what I'm trying to say here is actually kind of the current framework of the RL does not capture some of the complexity and challenges of some real world application. And that's when MDB come and try to solve them. Go ahead, Adrian. Um, so like, I want to bring up like the, the task of like an agent spawns somewhere in the maze and it needs to get to a goal state inside of the maze. And right now we, we formulate that as an MDP where you get zeros until you reach the goal, goal state. Um, I want to like contrast mon MDPs. Like, is mon MDPs appropriate for that kind of problem? So you're talking about kind of sparse reward settings? Yeah, but like it's not sparse if you get zeros. Yes, time. I'm coming to that one in my next slide. <laughs> Any other questions? Situation. Sure. If the homeowner's gone for like a week, then I really want the house to be clean. If it's coming back on Saturday, yeah. clean the house on Friday, I don't need to be clean before then. If that, that makes sense why I would want it not monitored. It'd be good not to waste energy cleaning dirt if I can just wait until, until Friday, but then. Yeah. That's what you're covering right now, or that's a different. No, a I, think, I think that's a different scenario, and that will be a little bit interesting. Um, what we're trying to say here is actually that when you're being monitored, you should use those informations uh, and use it when you, you are not being monitored. So for example, like the, um, the example of having different rooms, like you have a monitoring system in a room, maybe you could use that one, uh, the information you gain when you're being monitored to clean another room for that one. So the example you just gave, I think is a little bit different, whereas like there is a human preferences about like, you know, Turning on and off monitoring depending on their preferences. Maybe another example, sure. Russ, is if your robot was watering plants, the same story it doesn't really work anymore. Like, I do care about watering them when they're not gone. So, like, it's the MDP structure itself is going to specify that. Like, how it gives rewards is going to specify that structure. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just, I'm not sure if we talk about this later, but I guess I don't understand how this is different from like active learning. Um, because like in active learning, we're trying to figure out, okay, where should I ask for feedback such that um, I can, in general, learn a good enough reward function. So yeah, I work in like preference learning, where we're trying to learn preference, we're trying to learn a reward function from your preferences. But within that, we want to, we want to carefully ask, okay, well, like this situation is like important for me to ask, my human about, but, but maybe some other one isn't. So I guess, how, how, does, how is that different from the discussion? Yeah, this is a really good question. And we have a specific part in the paper talking about the active learning and how that related to that one MTP. But just kind of a quick answer for that one, it could be that um, you, you mentioned you still have preferences. So that could be treated as a feedback as well. And that's different from that one because like here, you, sometimes you don't observe the reward. But this preference may work as can for reward signal. Okay, sure. Okay. 
Uh, sure. So this is a slide I'm going to talk about some, I think we already covered some part of them. It's like uh, some other parts of RL or um, other fields where it could be related to MNMDB. Uh, so the first one is uh, partial absorbable MDB. So partial absorbable MDB is saying that you basically, you want the agent uh, ob not fully absorb the states, but still observe the reward. This is totally different from MonMDB. MonMDB is saying that the agent observes the full state, like you have the full observation of the state, but the reward may not be observable. This is, this is kind of the main difference between partial absorbable MDBs. Next thing is about, in kind of they're saying the sparse reward or intrinsic motivation. So for example, like you, you, you kind of like doing a lot of sequence of action until you receive kind of a reward. Um, and there was a lot of work kind of going there. So like, for example, give a bonus if you visit kind of a state that's really hard to get, or you do kind of a meaningful sequence of actions uh, for that one. Uh, but it's still the reward is observable. Like you get zero, so you get like, even it's, it's, it's like the reward's sometimes really hard to get, but still observable. This is, this is different from an MDB, where it's like the reward is unobservable. Uh, partially monitoring, uh, it's basically partially monitoring saying that uh, assume that you have kind of a slot machine, you have different ops to pull, and it will say like you will not, the, you, you will not know the exact outcome, so the payoff of, um, of the arm. So for example, if you have 10 arms, I will let you know the first three ones for that one. And that's uh, very, very similar to MNMDB, but MNMDB is actually extending that from um, uh, multi-arm band into to sequential decision making. And the last thing it could be um, related to is actually human envelope, like where the human give a feedback. Uh, even sometimes this feedback could be imperfect, uh, but it's still observable. Like, you know, you still kind of see kind of a signal about how good or bad that one, but MinimDB is it's a little bit different from that one. <coughs> Any other questions? Great, so let's, let's now move to the juicy part of the paper, um, the experiment. So in the experiment, our goal was basically saying that we would like to come with a very simple environment or very simple environment where we're saying those environments may represent kind of some real world application where it's kind of the, treating them as a normal MDB will fail, but uh, treating them as uh, monitored MDP that actually will make more sense and also will provide some baselines how to solve them. Okay, so we will start with what we call it kind of a simple environment. So a simple environment is a kind of a tabular, like you have the grid work, you have the agent always start here, and you have the goal over there, and obviously the, the, the goal is actually to walk to the goal for that one. Um, but the twist is here is actually you don't have four action. You don't have up, right. Uh, you don't have like, for example, up, down, right, and left. You have eight actions. Why? Because you could go up and ask to be monitored, or you can go up and not ask to be monitored. So every action now, like you, you can go up only. You can go up and ask to be monitored, and, and going up and not asking to be monitored. You will see the reward if you ask to be monitored. You will see the exact reward environment uh, if you ask to be monitored. Otherwise, you will receive undefined reward, none, or whatever simple you have. Okay? But if you ask to be monitored and you receive the reward, you will also have to pay a cost for that one. And this cost, let's say here we set it to minus 0.2. And of course, like you know, if you walk to the, to the goal, you will get plus one, otherwise you will get zero. And we work in a episodic setting where it's like, if you reach a goal, you will terminate, and also there's a certain number of time steps. If you exceed it, it will be terminated. Okay? Uh, go ahead, Fatima. Um, so if you don't ask to see the, if you don't ask to be monitored, then you would not see the? The reward. Oh. You will, you, 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 like for example. You know the goal, though. Isn't that part of the state description? Sorry? Isn't that part of the state description that you know the goal? Isn't that, well, since it's not a, a POMDB, you know for sure what your state is. You know the state, yes. The state is not the goal. You just want to make any money. But, but like, for example, from, from the agent perspective, it, it didn't know this is a goal state because it's tabular. Like, this is state, let's say, number two. <coughs> so the agent knows its exact position in the world. But it doesn't know that's a good thing. Yes. Okay. And that's cool. Yeah. Uh, I forget, there's, uh, what's your question about? Uh, yeah, so if you don't ask to be monitored, then 
it would, might or might not see the true reward, but it would get a, like the monitor. You will, you will move. So for example, if I'm in this position, I want it to go right, mm -hmm. you will move right, uh, but like you will not get the reward of moving right. But if I, if I move right and ask to be monitored, I will move right and get the reward of moving right. But also I have to pay a, a penalty for, for asking to be monitored. When I'm playing chess, I know I capture his king, but I don't know the game's over. I keep playing. Kind yeah. of. I yeah. I know the game could be over, but you don't know whether you want it. Yes. Okay. The game is just over. Okay. 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 Maybe it's a draw. <laughs> okay. So, okay. I got you. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Adrian. So if the, the robot walks into the, the goal state, the flag, um, I'm assuming the episode will get reset. Will 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 get reset, okay. but like you know, getting the reward of reaching the goal or not depending on if they ask to be monitored or not. That's a really good question. Go ahead. Right. So in, in this case, the reward is you said to reach the goal. It's plus one. Otherwise, it's minus zero point two. Uh, no. Otherwise, zero. Otherwise, it's zero. Otherwise, zero. Unless you ask to be monitored for like for example, going going right and asking to be monitored will give like you have to pay a penalty of minus zero point two <laughs> for that one. Yeah. So because like um, if you remember, we have two rewards. We have the monitoring reward and the proxy reward. So is there's always an assumption with monitoring in PPs that with just your state, just the agent state, you can never see if you're if you're done with the task. There's always a human or a monitor which tells you that the task terminates. No, it's not an assumption, and I will show kind of an example, kind of a little bit different for that one. Okay. Okay. So I would like to ask, what is the optimal policy will look like in this scenario? Yeah, go ahead, Dre. Um, don't get monitored and walk to the right until you reach the goal. Gone. Yeah, that would be kind of the optimal. But like, to reach that point, you have to figure out that this is a gold state first. Okay, uh, the next one is basically similar to the simple. We add a small twist. Is with, uh, basically, we add what we call a kind of a toxic waste. So if the agent is stepped into them, you will get kind of a huge penalty minus 10. So you wanted to avoid going to them um, as much as you can. It's similar to the, the, the previous one, you have eight action. What is the optimal policy will look like in this scenario? Is that cheating? Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> I'm going to be a stooge though. Uh, go right, don't ask to be monitored, then go right and ask to be monitored. But then no. You don't get any of the penalties for going into the toxic waste. Yes, but if you remember before, we see that yes, you cannot like. Sometimes you cannot observe the reward, but you still have to maximize the unobserved reward. If you might, uh, but now you are not maximize the unobserved reward. That's a problem of it. So, what is the optimal policy? While asking to be monitored or not? No, yes, that's exactly. So you have to work yeah, around. Yeah. Yes, until it is over. No, you don't even need to do that because that's just paying a minus point two for no reason. No reason. The good Lord already gave you. Actually, no. Okay. <laughs> so the last one, what we call it the bottom, it's a little bit different, like similar to the penalty, but the twist is here, this we call it kind of a bottom. So here you don't have the agent doesn't have an action for us to be monitored or not. They have only the environment action. So going up, right, left, and down. Okay. But the twist is here is actually you have kind of instead of having nine states, you have 18 states. So every state now will tell you that well, whether you're being monitored or not. So the agent cannot ask to be monitored, but the environment will tell you now you're being monitored or now you're not being monitored. So every episode is start with randomly, like 50% of the time you're being start with being monitored, 50% you're not being monitored. So how I can change that as an agent? So like for example, I'm being monitored, I wanted to turn that off. You have to walk all the way around the bottom here and take the down action. That's me like, you know, you walked to the cell and you stepped into the bottom. That's me like, I wanted to turn monitoring off and on, or on, depending on the, on the previous one. So stepping into, the, in, into this cell and going down will change the monitoring um, states. Does that make sense? So you know the mark. So yeah, you know like whether you're being monitored or not. And 50% of the time, you're starting being monitored. Other 50% of the time, you are not being monitored. And in order to, to, to do that, you have to do the sequence of environment action to turn monitoring on or off. OK? So what is the optimal policy may look like in this scenario? 
Go ahead. <laughs> uh, it's still the U-shaped behavior, but you're going to be using the actions. Like, you don't have monitor actions. But that's where do you start with being monitored, or you start with not being monitored? Because now there's two scenarios. Like, you could start here, and 50% of the time you're being monitored. You, you want to be in the so, state space where you're not being monitored. OK. And how that, like, for example, I start while monitoring is on. What I should do? You should turn off monitoring on your way. So I should go all the way here, step into the bottom, turn it off, and walk to the goal. Yeah. And that's exactly what optimal policy will look like. Go ahead. Well, if you go example, what was optimal policy? So do you go to the user, but do you turn the monitoring on or off? Monitoring off, because you pay a penalty every time you ask to be monitored. Yeah, but if the monitoring is off, you go but like, no, no, here, OK, this is different. Because as I just mentioned here, you have nine states. But the agent has the option of to, turn, to ask to be monitored or not, OK? As this is part of the action space. Here, the agent doesn't have that as part of the action space. Doesn't have the option of like going right and ask to be monitored. But the environment will tell you that you are being monitored or not. You cannot start. It's randomly initialized. Randomly initialized 50% of the time on, other 50% of the times off. OK? Good. So uh, in the next slide, I'll look, what I would like to do is actually saying that if we treat one MDB as a normal MDBs, what is the result going to look like? OK? So in the, whole, uh, in, the, in, the, in the next slide, what we're going to do is basically that we're going to build Q learning, as we just mentioned previously, tabular, so we're doing just Q learning. The, the, the only twist is going to be that how you're going to deal with the unobservable reward. Because like if, uh, if you observe the reward all the time, this is normal MDB, you, we know how to do Q learning with that one. But now there's a twist where it's like the RE, the RE had the proxy could be undefined. So the first idea could become that, OK, whenever the reward is unobservable, just treat it as 0 or other, or other uh, constant. OK? That will basically turn monitored uh, MDB to normal MDBs. And that will do something like that. For example, it's going to, so I forget to mention that when, uh, when the, the blue means that monitoring on, the red means monitoring off. Okay? So if we treat the undefined reward as zero, that's me like, you know, you can walk here, not ask to be monitored, but the only way to know this is the goal state is to ask to be monitored. And also, yes, it depends also how you initialize your Q, Q table and how you doing that. Oh, go ahead. Like, I think humans would understand the concept of undefined, but like, how do you represent that to a computer? So we just put it as an N. OK. So then you pass an N into a yes. neural network? Um, <laughs> here we don't have a neural network. <laughs> now we have a table. Yes, but like, yeah, you, okay. you, could, you, could, you could define it in a different way. But we decided to go with NAND. So NAND means that's something undefined. OK, so I think that, that, that explains why the agent actually asked to be monitored here. Because any time is actually doing kind of going right here without asking to be monitored, it gets 0. Because we replaced that one. So it never learned that like going to the goal with uh, with monitoring off, it's a good idea, okay? And that's even worse in the penalty because, like, I could I could walk to the to the toxic waste and I was not being observable, or, like you know, being monitored. I could do whatever I want because I wasn't being monitored, and that's something really terrible. Okay. There's also something interesting here in the bottom. Uh, just a quick reminder: in the bottom, we 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 don't have the action to. Uh, like we don't have the action of being monitored or not. Like the environment will tell us if I'm being monitored or not. So if monitoring is off in the red, for example, the agent will walk to the bottom, turn it on, and walk to the goal. Because remember, like the only way it knows like this is a goal by just asking to be monitored for that one. So it's actually kind of flip the thing. Like you know, when you was uh, when you should be monitored, you should go and turn it off. But it did the opposite uh, for that one. So those are kind of all of them are not optimal policies. So, like, if you treat the room, for example, as an MDB, where you replace, you do what you're saying at the top of the slide, 
that you're saying that the agent behavior would kind of diverge from what was intended. Yes. It would try to make sure it's being monitored. Yeah, and also it depends on the value you assign it here. So like yeah. later on, I have some 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 uh, some example where you change it to to the the maximum reward and the maximum penalty, and that's of course change the behavior. But the takeaway for that one, if you treat the undefined reward as any other constant, that would fail. Next thing gonna be that okay, whenever I see undefined reward, I will skip the key updates. I will not do any updates. So I will do my updates only if I observe the reward. The problem with that, you only learn when you're being monitored. Because like 50, like you know, as I just mentioned, when you are not being monitored, you didn't update your queue, your queue. So like you will do kind of the same thing, but I will be always monitored because I don't know what is the outcomes when I'm not being monitored. So just quickly here that uh, this error here that's saying it's doing something random. Like, you know, uh, I don't know what to do. So I will, I, will, I will just do something random here because I didn't know what to do when the monitoring is off. Okay? Uh, this one is basically saying that this baseline is different. So now, remember, we have two, uh, we have the monitoring and we have the environment. So how about having different queue function for each one? So let's have the queue function for the environment, which is going to be that given the state of the environment and the action of the environment, what is the queue environment value will look like. And the same apply for the QM, but the QM it takes into account the joint uh, state and the joint action. Okay, but here there is a problem. Now you have two Q function. How you kind of deal with them? First idea could be something like, okay, I will do them sequentially. So I will take first the the the, the environment action that maximizes AE, and given that one, I will take AM that maximizes QM. Okay, so first I will do I will I will take that environment action that maximizes QE, and after that, given that one, I will I will I will take kind of the um, the monitoring action that um, uh, maximizes QM, and that solved the first pass of the simple, basically, and also the second one, but it failed in the in the in the bottom one. Let's see why it failed. Okay, when the monitoring is off, seems to be fine. But when monitoring is on, it didn't turn off it here. Like it didn't step to the goal because like it it it, it like it first take that environment action that maximizes QE, and that's what makes it wrong. So you you always you kind of you start with taking the action that maximizes this one. So that's that's we we'll, we we'll, we'll never learn that you have to do a sequence of action to turn monitoring on or off. So similar to that one, if you have two Q functions, let's try to join them together. So I will now I have a value for this one, and I have a value for this one. I will take the joint action AE, the environment action AM, that maximizes the sum of, 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 um, of QE and QM. That will certainly actually serve the, like, solve the first example, the simple environment and the penalty, but it failed here. It failed actually when monitoring is, is on, in doing something random. And the reason behind that is that kind of some some post of this Q function doesn't seem intuitive, like because like yeah, I think QE and QM, if you sum of them, there is no guarantee that that will max like that will be the optimal action you get there for that one. So that's also fail in the queue joint if, you, if, if you're trying to do submission of those posts. So the last best line we're going to present is basically that what we'll do if we have, if we build reward model, okay? So let's have, you now you have reward model and I will use that instead of the environment reward. So whenever I'm doing my queue updates, I will use the reward from this uh, reward model and I will update my reward model whenever I see a reward. So now the, the queue update doesn't have anything to do with the environment reward. It does have something to do with this kind of, you build kind of this reward model, and you update it whenever you see kind of a reward. That's actually solved the first one, the second one, and also the third one. Because as long as you visit every state action quite often, your predictive reward model will converge to the optimal policy. 
and if uh, like, sorry to, to, the, to the optimal reward, and now you convert to the optimal policy. So the idea is here is that if you visit every state action quite often, now you have a perfect reward model, and that will replace the the, the environment reward. But there's this assumption about I have to visit every state action. There's two questions. Can't get it. Oh. Well, no, I mean, is that because right now we're like in the tabular setting? Yes. So like, what what would happen? Because yeah, I mean, I'm on reward model, so I'm feedback, and and I'm not in the tabular setting. So why would 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 we get the same benefits in the um, in the non tabular setting? So like, you, so your your question is basically saying that how that could generalize to functional approximation when when you have a tabular, you mean, or yeah, just like. What benefits do we get from the mon MDP over just learning a reward function uh, in the uh, function approximation setting? I'm not sure I understand the question, but like, uh, so are you asking about how we can generalize that function approximation, or it worked because now we are in tabular? Yeah, I guess I'm saying. I all, when I saw this problem that you were talking, your initial problem setting, yeah. I always assumed we could just learn a reward function. Yeah. And so I'm saying, why do we need mon MDP when we can just learn a reward function? Okay, okay, got you. So yeah, um, it's a really good question. What you're trying to say is actually reward model, building reward model is a solution to mon MDP. We are not saying this is the, uh, like, you know, the, the reward model will solve every mon MDP. Okay? It's a solution, as I just mentioned, it has some constraints like to guarantee convergence, like you have to visit every state action quite often. So we're not saying here that this is a solution for MoneyMDB. This is a solution for some certain of MoneyMDB. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Jerry. I guess what are so the inputs to the reward model are like your monitored and unmonitored states? No, it's only the environment, the environment state and the environment action. Because like now, you, for every state, uh, for every state action pair in the environment, now you have a value for that one, and you update that whenever you see a reward, and you use this table uh, to replace uh, the the environment reward, and that's guaranteed to convert as long as you visit every state action, and of course the environment is uh, deterministic. Okay, uh, I think I'm um, a little bit late, but I have just two slides to run off on. Uh, the first one about the future work, as I just mentioned before, this is just a typical device uh, of this project. So now we have, we, we, we're moving to different direction. One of the directions is that actually how we can enhance exploration because we have some results saying that exploration in MDB is hard, but in one MDB is even harder for that one. So how we can come with kind of more sample efficient algorithm to solve that one. And the next thing is actually uh, how we can use planning, how like the information about being monitored, how the agent could take advantage of that one. That's also another direction. Uh, the third direction is basically generalization. Generalization in terms of, for example, moving to functional approximation to continuous action space. Also generalization in terms of the, uh, the if, you, if you remember before we have the solvable MDPs, we have unsolvable MDPs. For example, you have two rooms. Uh, so generalization in terms of how can I use the information that when I gain it when I'm being monitored and use that information when I will not be monitored and that has something to do with caution, another work I'm working on. Uh, so this is two direction of the generalization. Another kind of uh, stressing about how that could be extended to multi-agent scenarios. Okay, so at the conclusions, um, we say that MDB is usually, like MDB assumes that the reward is always available and there are some real world applications that doesn't fit that and MoneyMDB will be uh, a solution for it. And we hope that this work will be similar to how MDB motivate uh, the field actually to move into kind of um, improve on, on, on algorithm, work on theory, convergence, and also real world application. We'd like to, uh, Mon to see M uh, MoneyMDB doing the same thing. And this is just kind of a list of our contributions and feel free to scan the QR code for the archive version. And yeah, we'll be more than happy to take questions. Yeah, go ahead. So I guess I have a follow-up question to my previous question. Um, like, I want, have you tried 
Because I guess I'm thinking now, you're like making the state in action space like much larger. Well, especially in some of your examples, like the actions are now double because it's like all on and all. So I guess, yeah. I wonder if you stuck with the original uh, uh, MDP, <laughs> could you like add it some on top of it? But, Wait, yeah, maybe could, could you go to your very first slide? Because I feel like I'm not using the right words. Cause no worries. Very first one? Okay. Yeah, when you first describe the environments. The setup. Oh, the, okay. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. This one? Yeah. Okay. I guess like if you just had the environment state action and instead of all the additional monitor state action. Could you just learn a reward function from the environment state in action? But as just mentioned, like, you know, you are not seeing the reward environment, you're seeing the proxy reward. Then do you need, like, the, the monitor state in action? Yes, because, like, if you ignore them, how you would know that you were being monitored or not? How, how you know that they, the, the environment may not give you that information? The environment state may not give you that information. So maybe can't you just have like if you're learning a reward function, here's some state in action, and then randomly a human will say, okay, here's plus one, and now you just associate now you just build a reward function that says, okay, in the state in action, all I get plus one, and then you can begin to generalize. So all the other your reward your reward all the other states in action will be just more arbitrary value. Okay. I can give an answer, but you should answer it if you want. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm not sure I understand the question quite well, but like, from what I understood, it's basically that saying if you have the human that give you a feedback for every state action for for the environment, you could use reward model on top of that one, and that would solve the problem. Yeah, I think that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, but the assumption here is actually the reward it's unobservable sometimes, so. I guess I think the, the, the human is not always there. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't, they can be gone. Okay. And you just have arbitrary value for that state in action. So it's like, instead of like man, it's just like 1.3 or something. Just some, some arbitrary value. Yeah, you could do that, I think. Uh, but I mean, still, I think the, 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 the important point here is actually the reward is undefined. But like, for example, how you could code that, that's, I would say, a design choice uh, for everyone. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically what I think about, but maybe Mike have a better answer for that one, if I understand oh, the question. Better. Uh, I, I think you're describing a particular one, okay. one where, say, the environment reward is not always available, but it's stochastically available, right? Okay. So that could be represented as a particular mod MVP or the monitor. Maybe it doesn't have any state, just roll some dice and says whether you get it or not. Okay. And under that particular mod MVP, I think your solution is exactly right. That would work just fine. Uh, train a reward function so that when you don't have it, you can use your train function instead. Uh, mod MVPs can do much more things than that. So some of the things are like, well, what if I actually, to get that reward, I had to do something, like the third example. In order to get any reward, I have to press the button. And so then now I can't just say, try to learn a a reward function because I have to take some active action to even get the observation to train. Okay, thank you. So I think, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And also, just like, uh, sorry for interrupting, but another thing that, that the, the example I just mentioned is just example of monitoring scenario. There are, we have in the paper, we have different monitoring scenarios. For example, like you have different experts, uh, but every expert, like, you know, they are, you have a junior expert, like kind of a very ex expert expert, and like the, the monitoring cost for each one is different because everyone will give you kind of more perfect feedback. So one MDB is actually way bigger than that one. Those examples I just mentioned is just an, an uh, simplest examples. Go ahead. So the difference between if you get the reward correctly or you get silence, what is the noisy version? We are not assume actually it's perfect. We have other, yes, we, we have other scenarios where it's like, for example, like you have to pick a phone and the phone actually have a battery. And the quality of, let's say, the call would depend on the battery. So now you have maybe a noisy kind of a reward from what you're saying. So uh, here, I don't think we're making any assumption about the reward should be the exact reward from the environment. Okay, well, in the presentation, you can look at that. So you have a 
In some, in some, in, yes. Uh, in the experiment I just mentioned, yes. You gave this categorization, but I think the original definition says R hat E could be literally any. Oh, but obviously, okay. but obviously, if R hat E is like negative R E, then it's not going to like then it chunk. gives you like zero signal, and there's no way to ever know that. So like there is a case of of just sort of hopeless situations where the proxy is giving you no information and you can't possibly. Well, again, knowing that it's silent is different than getting an answer and not yeah. knowing it's wrong. Yeah. So, I'd rather be so, silent than be wrong. Yeah. Right. Unless so we gave, a, yeah. we gave sufficient conditions for it to be solvable, and they include that either it's silent or it's correct. Uh, but if you were to drop that and say, no, no, what if it could be wrong sometimes, then I think we have yet to come up with any sort of situation where it's provable. What if they're now seeing your plus or minus one? Yeah. Sure. I, th I think actually probably only need to be either right or silent in expectation. Like yeah. it's either right in expectation or silent. That would be sufficient. I got multiple samples. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I guess you have a couple of um, scenarios where some algorithms work, some algorithms don't. But uh, is that provable that some algorithms are definitely better than other algorithms in all scenarios? So it's just. Uh, so your question about are there some algorithms that are better than others? Yeah. So in terms of let's say sample efficiency, how fast they learn? Examples. So what if you have other examples? Yeah, maybe other examples. Maybe this algorithm works better, but other ones don't. That's exactly what kind of the future work we're currently working on. So yes, in the paper we 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 propose a solution. Uh, we argue that it's. It will be it, it will solve some certain type of MoneyMDB. They have some constraint for that one, um, but yeah, of course, like you know how to do kind of a better algorithm in terms of sample efficiency. That's also kind of one of the work we we're currently working on it. Questions? Yeah, um, I can see why the state interview would be helpful. I can see why the actual also interview would be helpful. Um, I think I can see why the reward also has to be decoupled as well because the like only because of the partial observability part. Yeah. Um, otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, it could just be the same. Exactly. Yeah. Um, then my second point, I guess, is um, this is probably future work, but you define the cost of being monitored. Um, so like. Maybe a person doesn't know the cost to. Yeah, maybe you don't know the cost of getting monitored yet. Um, I guess that could be. So, like, for example, RE, uh, RM could be also something have kind of a proxy monitoring reward. Is that what you mean? Well, like, I guess the, I don't know, but the example I want to bring is yeah. like if it's someone pressing a clicker, um, maybe they'll get annoyed. Despite you doing the task, they'll get annoyed and not give you the clicker yeah. because your bike will learn so much. And <laughs> I want my house clean and I don't want to be annoyed about it. And that is my task specification. Uh -huh, got you. So like, the, like I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I, I'm, I'm following. So do you think that could be part of the agent, what the agent see, or that? Um, are you, are you uh, just saying the like, RM is like kind of subjective? Like we. Like, yeah, you could get annoyed by this. I mean, love a person with buttons, so yeah. it's like a hand close, I'm just, yeah, I have so much fun. So it's like, it, 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 can just, it can just be hard to determine what RM is. For like, uh, the people, like, for the people giving these. You know, like, that's, that's just part of monitoring. Like, maybe I'm in a world where the person loves giving me feedback. Yeah. And so, like, it's not minus 0.1, it's in fact plus 0.1. I should go turn on the monitor. Yeah, yeah. Monitor, yeah. Maybe you are in grad school. <laughs> We're in a world where yeah, the person absolutely despises this, and I should you know not ask ever. Yeah. Uh, so and I, guess, I think the agent does. In this, the way we set this up, we don't assume RM. The RM function is known, so the agent is learning that as well. I guess then I would say that RM could be partially observable. Um, in this sense. Isn't it? Uh, because I think the way I was phrasing it doesn't have to be right. Like it's. Sure, and, and to, to start, just like I don't know where the goal is in the environment, I don't know what RM is, but as I interact and you press the button and you, and you say, yes, that's the right thing to do, but I'm so mad at you for asking yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then yeah, I find out. Like, it's not. Well, how happy. Yeah, like I'm full on every step, so it's not partially observable. Oh, okay. Now, if you're secretly mad, 
he didn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Are we have any questions from Zoom? No. no. Good. I'm not sure that's a good sign or bad sign. Is there a microphone on? Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> any, any other questions? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm surprised that the joint view function didn't work. And I would like to know, like, when, if I want to approach making a solution matter for one of the do I have to be thinking about doing this reward function? Or is there a way that this can be addressed on the Q function side? Given the three minutes to one, I think maybe we should talk about that. Also. And if you're interested, you maybe come up and uh, that. I think it's very interesting to answer why Q joint is. Yes, and we, it, it took us a while to figure out with that. But just like, you know, one point I have to mention is that when we say kind of the predictive reward model, uh, work, that means it's it's a solution for a particular thing. We're not saying that it should solve any uh, any one empty thing. Okay. Are there any other questions? If not, yeah, thank you so much, everyone.